Isaiah 51, Heavenly Father, we ask your Holy Spirit would illuminate the scriptures that we have understanding of them so that we can take it and apply it to our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now watch this. Look to the rock from which you are hewn. You all have an original point from which the blessing uh, launches out from. Okay? Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. Now watch what God did for Abraham. I called him alone, wow. and blessed him alone, and increased him alone. He didn't get to where he was at because he had a rich uncle funding him. He didn't get to where he was at because he had a corporate sponsor. He got there because of God's empowerment. Amen. That's right. and you're going to reach your fulfillment of your destiny too. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. If you want to get somewhere that's, that's a high calling, you need to look at those who've already been there and who have walked that walk, and then you observe their life, and then you emulate those principles that work for them, and you know what? They'll work for you too. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Think about the life of Abraham. It says in the Bible that Abraham was very rich in, in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, I've been on that, Pastor Stephen. Yes, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but it's more than just like I see it, I like it. I, you know, no, you, if you want that, tie into that. Tie into his lifestyle, tie into the way he lived his life, and you'll you'll have the same thing. Now, now you think about what God did for Abraham because Abraham loved God with all of his heart. A Abraham tied into this empowerment from God, and he gets he gets an idea. I need to have a location. I need to have a location for my cattle business. I've only got a few cows, but I believe that God can bless this. And so he had a location that historians believe that was right on the main thoroughfare of the ancient Middle Eastern trade routes. Say location, location, location. <laughs> not, watch. Not only that, you read the scriptures, he dug wells. Oh, now he's got water in the middle of the desert on the intersection of a major trade route. What does that produce? The largest car dealership in the area. <laughs> Livestock, camels, uh, cattle, and all of this, and all these people are going by every day. Every day. May I present to you that Abraham was technically the first cattle baron. <laughs> Pastor Stephen, I'm inspired. After the service, I'm going to go out and buy a big dually truck. I'm going to get some cowboy boots and a big old belt buckle. I'm going to be like Abraham. <laughs> mm, cattle, silver, and gold. He was loaded. Oh, I'm in on that, Pastor Stephen. Okay, okay. so then, then you look to Abraham, your father. Okay, God called him, God blessed him, God increased him. He'll do the same thing for you. Thus, emulate that life. You'll start getting the same results. Okay, okay, Pastor Stephen, tell me more. Okay, Abraham was a tither. He was a tither. Well, that's under the law. Well, he was tithing before God ever instituted the law through Moses. And now, now the law said, now, now you have to. <laughs> right? And there was a purpose for that. But Abraham, even before that, he's already tithing. He's already tithing. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. All I'm saying, if you see something you want to get into, then just look, find out what they're doing, apply it to your life. The word will not work for you without application. Amen. Say yes. yes. Mm -mm. Okay, so if we look at the lives of those who were successful in Christ, in God, you'll see principles that they operated in. It worked. It will also work for you. Relax, I'm not teaching on tithing today. I'll leave that to Pastor Claudia. <laughs> She's real good at all that. I'm, I'm, I'm coming a different route. I'm coming a different flow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to Mark 1, Mark chapter 1. Let's go to the New Testament 
and let's look into the life of Jesus. You know this, but your life is made up of years. Years are made up of days. You've got 365 days in a year. But winning in life basically comes down to winning every day. If you just take one day at a time, and you can live one day right, if you can work the principles of God's Word one day, then you go into the next day. Before you know it, you're starting, you're starting to get lift off. Wow. Praise the Lord. Well, if we can find out what's working for Jesus... And we, we say, well, I, I can take that too, and I can, I can do that. You'll get the same results. Say yes. 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 Watch this. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Now in the morning, this is referring to Jesus, having risen a long while before daylight. Who? He got up a long while before daylight. Well, that's, that's 10 o'clock in the morning, Pastor Stephen. No, it's not. Sun's already up and burning bright by 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. But a specific time is not mentioned because God doesn't want you to get bound in legalism. He just wants you to know that there was some type of a time that the Lord would get up a long while before the sun ever came up. I, I don't have my, my smartphone on me, but... Uh, maybe somebody can tell me what time was sunrise this morning. Maybe you can check your little weather calendar just for a moment. Feel free to do that. I'm hearing a, a, a time come. What time was sunrise today? 6.45? Okay. Sun came over the horizon in Albuquerque at 6.45. So he was up a long while before that sun ever came up. What, if we, if we ask ourselves honest questions, what was a long while? Could, could you, with a good conscience, say 10 minutes? Uh, that, that just, I, can't, I can't lie to myself. I, I don't think that's true. What is a long while? Again, it's not identified. God doesn't want you to get bound to legalism and think you've got to do this, and if you don't do it, this is your belt. No, it's not, it doesn't work like that. But I, I just would present to you that a long while is what you would think a long while is. I would, I would be so bold to probably present that it's probably at least an hour. Yeah. At least an hour. Okay. Every single day of, of his ministry, when his ministry goes, it, it says immediately when he came out of that wilderness, his fame went abroad. I mean, I mean, the spirit was all over him and it was just, it was on. It was going. So, okay. The enemy's not sitting back and saying, Oh, well, you know, this, what, what do we do? No, the, the devil didn't take this guy lightly. And so every single day, the most cunning attacks are lined up for him. And when he goes and ministers, I mean the Pharisees, they were on him. They, they plot it. These, these are not dummies plotting. These are brilliant people plotting. How can we entangle him in his words? How can we catch him in something that would be a, a doctrinal blunder? How can we set him up? I mean, they came at him. He's walking into that every single day. Mm -hmm. mm. And truth be told, you're walking into things every day too. Well, there are traps that have been laid. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May I present to you that if you don't meet the Lord in the morning and have this time, wow. you will be like the dog that I've watched run in circles trying to chase his tail. And he can't catch it. Why? Because once the day starts to roll, it's hard to put the brakes on. Mm. So Jesus, he's up a long while before the sun ever came up. Maybe, maybe, maybe he got up at three in the morning. Mm. This, this is implying a disciplined spiritual life. You cannot stay up and watch the late, late, late show and then think somehow this grace is going to hit you and you just jump out of bed the next morning. It won't be there. You have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor Stephen, the top 10 ESPN countdown doesn't start till 11 o'clock at night. That's just stuff you have to sort out with the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, this is what I want to help you with. With every, with every condition, God says, in other words, if you, if you do this, there's a reward associated. Mm -hmm. I want to I tell you about the reward in just a moment. I, but I would do you a dishonesty if I didn't tell you about the price tag. 
We'll get to the reward. You'll like it. But I, I'm just, I'm trying to lay out it, 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 at first a little bit of the price tag to get into what I call a school of the spirit. Mm. Wow. The tuition is high. I'm just going to give it to you right now. It's, it's, I'm not going to like play around with it. It is a high tuition to get into the school of the spirit. But anybody can enroll. Mm -hmm. You may even want to enroll today in the service before the service is over. We'll talk about that. It got up a long while before daylight. You can, you can do it different. But all I'm saying, there's a principle. Look to the rock that you were cut from. Look from Abraham. You're tied into these things. Look to Jesus. You're tied into these things. Thank you, Lord. They'll, look, they'll work for you, too. He got up a long while before daylight. I think, I think he was probably up around 3.30 or 4 every single day. Why? Too, too much going on to just walk into this like blindly. Oh, good morning, everybody. I just got up. Wham! The Pharisees are on you. Man, they're on you. I mean, and they, and they see, the enemy, has, he doesn't play fair. He kicks low on purpose. There is no, don't poke in the eyes, don't kick to the groin. No, he doesn't do any of that. He'll, he'll on purpose attack you at your weakest moment, and he'll look, he'll look for that moment and plot and plan, and that's when he hits. He does not play fair. So you don't really want to take a day off even on your vacation. Oh, yeah, go, 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 go to the amusement park, go to the beach, just, just have your time with the Lord. Because you never, you never know. You never know what a day may hold. We don't live in fear, but when you're prepared, you don't fear anything anyhow. And they, they couldn't get him. You'll be more than a match for the devil with the Spirit of the Lord resting on you. Praise God. Okay, so he got up a long while before daylight. He went out. If Okay, three words. He went out. If you do that, you've won 95% of the challenge. If you lay in that bed, Pastor Stephen, I like praying in the horizontal position. I like to lay down next to fifth in bedpost at that, that, that address. You will fall back to sleep, and you know you will. If you get up, you've won almost the whole thing already, even before you've prayed. If you'll just get up out of that bed and go to that chair, that recliner, whatever it is, that place designated as your place of meeting the Lord in the secret place. If you'll just go there and sit there. Don't lay down. Don't. See, see, I have a chair that's comfortable, but it's not too comfortable. You know what I mean? It's not so comfortable like start falling. No, it's, it's there, but I'm sitting up. That way I can, I can pray. I can have my time with the Lord. But you're going to have to go out. There's several reasons why you need to do that. Um, it, it actually gives some insight. It says, he went out and departed to a solitary place. Why? You can't play. You can't pray effectively in the same room where Peter's snoring. <laughs> oh, Father in heaven. <laughs> you need your own spot. He went out to a solitary place. Have your little place. Have your little place. Have your little place. Doesn't mean you have to go outside, but for him he did. Okay. Have your little spot that you go to. And there he did what? And there he texted. No. Oh, I got the wrong side of the room. And there he sent emails. Oh, sorry. He prayed. He prayed. Why do all of this and waste the anointing? If you're up, finish the verse. Pray. Pray. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you now, this is what the Lord told me years back. This is what He told me. He said, "If you'll do this, I'll do for you the following verse." Okay. Every, every promise has a condition. Every, every condition has that reward if you fulfill it. Here it is. Okay. Verse 36. Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. Okay. So this is what the Lord told me. 
following, when he said the following verse, he was meaning the, the fullness of the statement of what's revealed here. He said, if I, would, if I would tie into the same thing, just like you could look at Abraham and you see the results, but you look at what he's working, okay, that's what's producing those results. With Jesus, the effective ministry, the grace, the anointing, all of this. Okay, if you look at his life, you see the results, but you see what he's working. The Lord told me, if I did that, he said, they'll come looking for you too. Mm. Wow. And I've been busy ever since. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. I don't have an ad on my website that says, open for meetings, please call. <laughs> I've, I've got a full plate. I've got a full plate. Praise the Lord. Why? Why? If you work this, they'll come looking for you. Why? Because when you get up and get into that oil of the Spirit, start tying into the wisdom of God, you come into your career field, and there's something on you that cannot ever be on the unbeliever. Mm. You come in with answers. You come in with the lift. You come in with faith. You come in with grace, and you walk into that situation. Others may be perplexed. Why is it that you have the answer? You've been up before the sun ever came up. You've been spending time with God. And it doesn't matter if they laid the whole department off. They'll shut the whole company down before they let you go. Why? You're irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't ever forget. Jesus has two features of his life. I would even, if it helps you understand it, you could say the two persons of Jesus. You understand he's just one person. I'm just using this as an illustration to help you understand this. You have the person of Jesus that creates your peace, your Savior, your Redeemer. Okay, the person of Jesus who creates your peace. But you have the other side of Jesus. The person, the person of Jesus who, who has principles that he wants to teach you. And you can know him as you can know him as Jesus, your peace, and be broke and defeated and have the problems of life overwhelm you and you can't solve it and you're you're overrun. And you're overrun. And you love the Lord and you're saved. You would do anything for him. You know him as the as, as the as your peace. But but you get up in the morning. Here it comes. Watch this. You get up in the morning. He'll begin to reveal himself to you with his principles. Mm. Then you start winning in life. Yes. Watch this. Some of the holiest people I've ever met in church. I've met some of these old ladies that I'm not, I, I would not overestimate this. Pray eight hours a day. But yet, so poor. Mm. The church mouse has more provision than they do. <laughs> Mm. Why? They know the person, but they're not acquainted with his principles. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You got a scripture for that, Pastor Stephen, to verify it? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Christ, the power of God. Mm. Okay, that, that's that power, Redeemer. The only one that can fix your sin problem. That's Jesus, your Savior. Christ, the power, the power of God. Christ, the wisdom of God. The principles that you're supposed to live by. Mm. I grew up in church. And for the most part, we were never taught principles. And we loved the Lord. But oh, we suffered. Oh, we suffered. So many of us were sick. So many of us economically were hurting. Not only that, you know, growing up in Mississippi, at that time, the poorest state in the nation and it was, it was not just poverty. It was hard poverty. Hard poverty. It was, a, it was a blessing night when we had peanut butter and jelly. That was the blessing night of the week. Mm -mm. Other stuff the rest of the week, whatever we could grow in the garden in the backyard. Mm, I shook corn. I, I pulled peanuts out of the ground. It was survival of the fittest. Hallelujah. We were surviving, but we were skinny. Ooh, hallelujah. Living off peanut butter and, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and tomatoes. Oh, oh but now, now today that's special. It's all organic. We had no idea. We're eating all this rich organic food. Hallelujah. Ooh, but you know, it, it, it is only so good tomatoes with salt and pepper. That you, you can only squeeze so many calories out of a tomato. Ooh. Ooh. 
of the Lord, the person of the Lord, mm. but the principles. We, we, in many ways, were sitting in the dark. Hallelujah. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Night school of the Spirit. What goes mm. on in the night school of the Spirit? You get up in the morning. You're spending time with God. You're praying. You know, it doesn't take that long to pray for the president, pray for your pastor, pray for your, your, your family members. You, you, you pray for a little bit. You covered all the bases. What's next? What's next? What's next? Uh, I, for there was a, a period of a couple of years, I could not put my finger on actually what it was. I'm like, Lord, I, I get up and I spend this time with you. Yes, I pray, cover the bases and all, all, all the stuff. But what is this other anointing that when I sit there and it's like sitting under like, like a portal where ideas are coming out from heaven. I, I said, I... I said, I don't understand this. What is this different anointing? Then one day the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. You know what it is? It's the teaching anointing. Mm. It's the teaching anointing. Okay, now watch this. You have different universities throughout America. They're all ranked from the most prestigious one all the way to you have the top 100 and on and on it goes. But if you want to look at it from a global perspective, you have leading universities that stand out as the top ten even in the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A few years ago, I had the privilege of uh, just walking all across the beautiful Oxford University there in England with its different associate universities all under the umbrella of Oxford. So you stop and think about that for a moment. A university that's been having semester after semester and teaching after teaching for over 900 years uninterrupted. Hmm. You've got to be doing something right to have, have it run that long. It's not just where we have prestige. Well, there must be something that is causing this prestige to be generated. What is it? What is it? Why is it that Harvard University every semester 38,000, the 40,000 applicants pour in, knowing they're only going to take 2,000. And even the ones applying are the cream of the crop. Why, why does everybody want in there? Oh, well, Pastor Stephen, if you get in there and they accept you and you, and you graduate, then you have a diploma and that brings prestige and favor because of your association with having gone there. Well, yes, that is a part of it. And if you see something like that, 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 there's honor to that. But that alone can't float the boat. There has to be substance. What is it? It all comes down to this. Those universities, top ten in the world, this is what they have. They have the world's greatest teachers. And you want to sit under that teaching. Mm -hmm. Why? Impartation of knowledge. What they have, they can put it into you. Mm. And it can change the world. Whether it's the field of agriculture, the field of science, or the field of medicine. You will be taught by the best. Okay. Here's why you want to get into the night school of the spirit. Because of the teaching. The caliber is unsurpassed. Why? Because in the world system, there's natural wisdom. Where men, even when they're enlightened and they, they, they are full of science and they're full of the, the knowledge of the world. It says in, in the book of James chapter 3 that the wisdom that is from God is the wisdom that is from above. Therefore, it is, if it's from above, it's the wisdom that's above all other wisdom. So when you get into the night school of the Spirit and that teaching anointing begins to flow, mm, you are being personally taught by the Master Himself. It's the only school that I know of on the planet where the teaching takes place in the dark. Mm. Can you imagine showing up to class, University of New Mexico? Hi, we're here for class. Okay, turn on the lights. <laughs> or you'd be suspicious. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? Or were you? Okay, but, but this is in the dark. Sun's not up. Back then they had the, the oil lamps, but nobody's lighting lamps. This is the quiet time. This is the time the rain from heaven falls on your mind. On your mind. Mm. Glory to God. Well, 
Pastor Stephen, uh, I suppose you've been in these classes. What, what type of teaching would actually take place in such a uh, uh, high-level learning environment? All kinds of things. All kinds of things. Things pertaining to your, your destiny. God will talk to you also about your family. Things pertaining to your career. Because God, it is God's intention for you to rise to the top of your career field. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, uh, Abednego. It says they were ten times better than the other elites that are serving the king. In other words, the anointing can make you more brilliant than Harvard. The teaching grace, the teaching anointing, they'll ask you, no, no, hold on a minute. Now, where, where did you get, where did you come from? Show us your diploma. Oh, I, I came I came out of the school of the spirit, the night school of the spirit. Well, we've never heard of that. That's okay. All that matters is results. Mm -hmm. Right? Can you do it? Okay, you're in. Mm, something special coming on you. Something special coming on you that does what? It distinguishes you from the others, even if the others are brilliant. God can give you more. He can make your mind shift. I'm telling you, he can, he can shift your brain. He can change this. He can make you brilliant. Praise God. Say, Jesus, I receive. Say, Jesus, I'm considering, I'm, I'm considering signing up. Mm. 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 What's the tuition? What's the price? It's a steep price tag. It's a steep price tag that helps. Getting out of bed when your body screams and says, I need my beauty sleep. Please don't do this to me. Have you lost your mind? But if you'll get up, you'll find something amazing will touch your life. Wow. Maybe you've read books about it. Maybe you've heard many good sermons preached on it. But you'll find it touch your life. You know what it's called? Grace. Mm. Wow. You'll get up. You may feel totally exhausted. Maybe you couldn't even go to bed earlier the night before because you couldn't help it because of your schedule. Maybe children or activities or events or things that kept you up beyond your normal time. And you think, how am I going to show up for class the next morning? But you get up, you get up, you may feel awful. You may, you may feel just like this is crazy. And you go sit in that chair and suddenly it'll hit you. Why is sleep leaving me? Why, when I should feel like I, I need to go back to bed, why do I feel like I'm alert? This is amazing. What is this? It's grace that comes when you do your part. Wow. Mm. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You can touch it tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. Sometimes I've really needed it because of international travel or, you know, you know, your schedule is just turned upside down and all that stuff. So you still try to get up and seek the Lord. The body says, oh, but then comes the grace. And the next thing you know, you, the sun's coming over the horizon. This is wild stuff. This is wild stuff. Can I, can I just give you one example of like a, a, a curriculum that often the Holy Spirit will begin to teach during these night sessions? Would you like to know? Yes. Let's go to the book of Isaiah just for a moment. Are you having a nice time this morning? Yes. Yes. Isaiah 48. I just want to show you some curriculum material that you might think, wow, th these are interesting courses. I, I think I'd like to get into these. Uh, I'd like to get into this school. Hallelujah. You have to understand that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is the master teacher. Thank you, Lord. Jesus knows every spiritual law. He knows every natural law. He created them. Mm -hmm. We're still figuring them out. I live, I live in North Carolina, not too far from Kitty Hawk. We can drive there in a few hours. Where we flew. Why do we fly? Oh, we figured out laws of aerodynamics. Took us 6,000 years on the planet to do it, but we finally unraveled it. Wow. You could have flown in B.C. 2000 if you had the laws, if you knew the law that, that, that governs flight. We just didn't know. Mm. Teaching, teaching, revelation, revelation. As you sit there in the dark, in your spot, ooh, have something to write with. Because God is a great conversationalist. And you better believe he talks. He talks. 
Yes, he does. And a short pencil is better than a long memory. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Could be a song. Maybe you're a musician. You write it down. Could become a bestseller. Could be a book title. An idea. It just could, it could be a formula. Chemical formula or something like that. God works with you in your in your calling. You're in, you know, he doesn't give me chemical formulas. That's not my thing. I wouldn't even know what it meant. I talked to one man though that that had a had a formula downloaded to him because he's a chemist, and the product that came out of that formula is in every is in every drugstore in America and probably now almost in the world. It's all over Europe. It's all over Asia. Wow. And I talked to him personally. I said, I said, how'd you get the formula? He said, Brother Stephen, it was the most unusual thing. <laughs> now he, he said, I'm a tither. I love God, and I I love my church that I belong to. And he said, I was sitting on the toilet one day. <laughs> and this formula dropped into my mind. Right. And he said, oh, it worked. He went back to the laboratory. He wrote it out. And, um, and it worked. And it was a chemical formula for a medical, for a medical purpose. I said, oh, so you had a real throne room encounter. <laughs> yes. Yes. Say, so, so Lord, touch my mind. Mm. Mm. He said, I just, he said, I just wrote, I wrote the check for my pastor to pay off the whole brand new sanctuary we're, we're building. He said, I paid the whole thing off. Keeps a low profile. You know, just lets the pastor know this. The church doesn't, the church is like in a wondrous awe. How is all this stuff being built? Right? <laughs> Woo! But he said, he said that idea came straight from Jesus. It came straight from heaven. Mm. Teaching. Say teaching. Well, now look at this. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. Now, who would your Redeemer be? What do we know his name as? Jesus. Okay. The Holy One of Israel. Okay. We, we know who this is. He says, I am the Lord your God who teaches. Who teaches you to do what? Prophet. To be poor? Pastor Wyatt, I'd like to have a counseling session with you. <laughs> yes, why? I, uh, Pastor, I'd like, to, I'd like for you to teach me uh, how to be poor. I'd like to go downhill. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't need any teaching to go downhill. <laughs> It'll just pull you down. I can tell you how to get there. Just don't get out of bed tomorrow morning. <laughs> just keep laying there. They'll be calling you for work. Where are you at? Well, I'm, try I'm trying to teach myself how to be poor. No, no. You need teaching to go uphill. Okay. The Lord can even teach you, night school of the Spirit, how to do what? How to profit. Now look, I'm a minister. The, the Lord helps me to run the ministry effectively, smoothly, and efficiently. But some of you, you need to be grabbing this. You can get an idea. You, you may love your job, but God can give you an idea. Something you can start on your job on the side. You don't have to quit your day job if you like it. Keep it. But... He can teach you something to do, a, a product or an idea or something like that. And the next thing you know, life is getting very, very exciting. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Okay, let me say this. If you want him to teach you, that means there has to be an element of your life of humility that says, Lord, you obviously know things that I don't know. Therefore, I submit. Help me. Because there are those that like, hey, nobody going to teach me nothing. And the Lord won't bother with them. Mm. But if you are humble and you say, Lord, just come on, help me. I mean, Lord, you, you, can, you can do something with me. Come on. He'll, he'll, he'll teach you. He'll teach you. Hallelujah. He'll teach you the prophet. He'll teach you the prophet. He'll lead you by the way you should go. All of these things going on is you just wait on the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. You're praying. You're praying. And then he comes with that anointing. It's an unmistakable anointing when you realize what it is. It's the teaching anointing. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus was getting. That's what Jesus was getting every morning. And the scribes and the Pharisees and the people are like, where, where is, he, is he getting this stuff? <laughs> he was like, he was making the experts of the Mosaic Law look like elementary teachers when he came out and started teaching. I mean, he just opened it up and said, this is what, and he's teaching with authority. This is what it means. And they were just like, we've never heard anything like this before. Where's he getting all this from? 
Oh, that, that's true. That's because he's God. He's God. He's Jesus as a man reliant on the Spirit just like you and I are. And he tapped into it, so can you. If you work what they worked, you look into their lives of the biblical giants, work, look into the life of the master, work those same principles, you'll start going up, and they'll come looking for you. In your career field, they'll look for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, 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 glory to God. Lord, we give you praise today. We give you praise today. Let's look at one more. This one's also on the, um, on the curriculum as well. Night School of the Spirit. I've had the Lord talk, talk to me about this one. I'm really praying that many of you step into this. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm sure you've heard this verse before. It's a wide curriculum. The Lord will teach you about many things. He teaches me about the anointing. Teaches me about the kingdom. Teaches me, you know, helps me with things regarding what I do. Television, so forth, things along that line. But here's another thing that he'll bring up too in these classes. Verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power. Now, now say, say power. Power. Power to get what? Say it again. Well, well, well. Well, Pastor, Pastor Steve, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say it. I've been told that it's a dirty word. Say it. Well, 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 well. Pastor Steve, I, I don't know if it's God's will for us to have it. If it's not his will for you to have it, what in the world would he give you power to get it for then? Yeah. Is God confused? Yeah. <laughs> Woo. 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 He gives you power to get wealth. Hallelujah. Yes, Pastor Stephen, I'm waiting for that power to come on me, and I'm going to turn green and burst out of my jacket. <laughs> oh. This is a different kind of power. What is that power? Okay, that power is disseminated in these teaching classes in the night school of the spirit. What is the power? Ideas. Mm. Ideas. The power to get wealth. You need an idea. He'll give you the idea. That's why the Holy Spirit is typified in the Old Testament as rain. Rain coming down. Did you ever notice the rain falls on the just and the unjust? And even the unjust can get an idea? I was in a meeting years back. Kenneth Copeland was prophesying. This was maybe, this was maybe like 22 years ago. And he's prophesying. And as he's prophesying to, you know, to the whole group, Jesus, as you understand prophecy, Jesus is speaking through him. He's the vessel, but the Lord's speaking through him using Brother Copeland as the vessel. And the Lord's speaking through Brother Copeland, and the Lord is saying, I tried! I tried! I tried to give the laptop computer idea to a believer! And I went to believer after believer, and they wouldn't accept it, and I finally had to go to the world. Mmm. 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 Say power, power. Through, ideas. through ideas. Say, Lord, give me an idea. So when you ask that, Lord, give me an idea, he extends the, um, the sign-up sheet for night school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he extends the, uh, the opportunity to come into the, uh, the university of the night school of the spirit. Mm. It's, it's price tag. It's price tag. Oh, I wanted a different way. Well, when I look at the Lord's life, when I look at what He's doing, if you want those results, just do what He's doing. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. I want cattle, silver, gold. Okay, then look into the life of Abraham. Emulate his life, his practices. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, I'm really thinking about coming in. Mm. Mm. Say that. Say, I'm really thinking about signing up. Mm. One more, one more verse. Malachi chapter 4. Last book in the Old Testament. Lord, we give you praise. Malachi chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Verse 1. Can I show you a prophetic event that's already been decreed 
and it's going to happen whether people try to stop it or not, whether they think it won't happen or not, it is already prophetically declared and it is coming up on the earth. Mm -hmm. See, there are some things, they are, they are spoken by God and it's going to happen. There will eventually be a catching up of the saints. It's going to happen. There's going to eventually be an, a wrap up of this whole thing. But if it's declared by the Lord, it must come to pass. And you have that in verse 1. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. Ah, I knew it, Pastor Stephen. There's the verse, verifying global warming, right there. No. It's not what that's talking about. This is end time economic meltdown heat. This is nation saying, we can't handle the debt. What are we supposed to do? We can't even pay the interest on the note. Hmm. Economic heat like the world has never known. The EU is already feeling it. The EU doesn't know what to do with Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, Spain. The debt, the debt is astronomical. They're never going to be able to pay it back. Mm -mm. Oh, we'll just let Germany hold the whole thing up. Oh, and wreck their economy? There's problems that the most brilliant minds can't fix. Why? They're not operating on biblical principles. They're operating on a world system. And God on purpose says here in Scripture, He's going to allow the economic heat to come. Why? It's, what it's going to do, it's going to burn like an oven and all the proud. Mm. Yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble, and the day which is coming shall burn them up. I don't need God. Look at me and my money. I don't need your religion. There's going to come a time you're going to feel the heat, and it's not going to work for them anymore. Wow. And they're going to say, it's not working. <laughs> what do we do? Large corporations, directors, meetings in the back room. What are we going to do? It's not working. It's worked for us in the years past. What do we do? Mm. Heat, heat, heat. And God has a plan for you to be exempt. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Be exempt. Lord. You're going to be cool. <laughs> and you're going to watch this. You're going to be debt free. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going to be ready. Yeah. And when they're selling 90% off, you're going to be buying. Mm. You're going to be buying. Hallelujah. And you're going to be funding the gospel. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And there will come a time when the church is not buying airtime on the satellites. We'll have our own satellites. Yeah. And then they can never take you off the air. Mm. Why? You, you take them off the air. You have the satellite. <laughs> they got to they come to you for airtime instead of us going to them. See, the Lord already knows this is coming. Mm -hmm. But it's not his intent for you to feel it mm. or experience it. Mm, he's got a place for you. That's right. He'll teach you. He'll tell you what, what, what to do. He'll get you so set up. He'll get you so protected. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You just go right through it. You're going to go right through it. Sometimes we look at these things and we, we think, Lord, Mark 135, Lord, that's, that's not easy. No, it's not. Mm -mm. I've been doing it for years. It's still not easy. There is a pattern. It's not like when I first started. But there's still times because I'm in a flesh and blood body until Jesus takes me home. I've got to deal with this thing that still some days just like to lay there. But you, you have to you have to realize, oh the glory. Well, I mean, we are in the end times. Lord, I can't be I can't be laying around. Mm -hmm. So the scripture says, Jesus in one of his parables says, while he slept, the enemy came and sowed the wrong seed and put the tares in with the wheat. While he's sleeping. Mm. Mm, mm. Oh, I know you need sleep. The human body needs sleep. But I would just suggest you meditate on perhaps you don't need as much as you think you do. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's even a grace that can help carry you and you begin to tap into that. And this is something you can make a lifestyle out of. And they'll come looking for you. Mm -hmm. They really will. Mm. There'll be something on you. You can't get it any other way except to get into that class. Mm. No, I, I like praying during the daytime. I like praying in the, you know, after dinner or something like that. But this is something special. This is where the teaching is going on. That's where the master was getting it at. And even in the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, prophetically foretelling of the Messiah, said that he would be awakened early and that the Messiah's ears would have to be opened. 
And in the Hebrew, it means his ears have to be dug out. Okay, mm. That's what's going on in those night sessions of the Spirit. The things of the world, many of the things we've been programmed with, the, the Holy Spirit comes and teaches, revealing the Word, giving you ideas, giving you illumination. Hallelujah. And your ears open to hear the voice of God. Wow. How many of you like to step into these teaching classes? Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and stand up. I want, to, I want to pray for you today to receive grace, to receive impartation. That you have your own encounter with the Lord. That you have your idea from heaven fall on you. That the state of New Mexico rise to the top. That the city of Albuquerque be a blessed city. Amen. Hallelujah. That industry and corporations would say, we need to relocate to Albuquerque. Yeah. We like Albuquerque. We, we don't know why. It's not the, really the green chilies. That's nice. But we just like Albuquerque. Let's do business with Albuquerque. Yes. Hallelujah. And then they end up as members of the church. All kinds of things happen. Hallelujah. Glory yes. to God. Destiny standing right before you if you'll come in the Mark 135. There's destiny standing right before you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord Jesus. He extends to you an invitation to enroll right now in the night school of the Spirit. If you don't want to, if you say the tuition, or I don't want to pay that, I actually have the money I could pay it, but I don't want to, that's okay. God still loves you. Your name's still written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you're a believer. Still okay. But if you're a person that says, I believe that God has a destiny for me, and for me it's important, it's an imperative that I fulfill it, then I think this is something that's tailor-made for you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. You see the hungry hearts. You see, you see in essence, Lord, those that are saying, Lord, teach me. Mm -hmm. Father, you're seeing humility in your people. They are saying, Lord, I want to be taught. So, oh God, I ask right now that those that want to enter into the night school of the Spirit with hands up, with hands up, that you make a seat for them in the class beginning tomorrow morning. Mm. Whatever works for them, Father, whether it's 2.30, the 3.30, 3, the 3.45, or whatever fits for them, Father. Everybody's got their own little thing. Whatever fits for that person, enroll them, hands up, enroll them now. Receive. Receive. Take your right hand. If it's your left hand, take it. If it's your right hand, lift it. Take your hand. By faith, see the scroll in front of you. This is your invitation to the night school. This is you also saying you'll be there in class in the morning. Understanding that if you're making that commitment, if you don't show up, the angel is going to be like, where's she at? Okay. If you're ready to make that commitment, this is a three-month plan. Three-month plan. 30, 60, 90 days. Three-month plan. These, these run in semesters just like universities do. God would like for you to be there every day for for three months, 90 days, you're allowed three misses. Mm. <laughs> That's tight, Pastor Stephen. Yeah, so is Harvard and Oxford. You want higher education. This is this is how it works. You can't learn if you're not there. Right. Hands up. Thank you. Take your hand, write your name. Dot the I cross the T. Thank you, Jesus. Starts tomorrow, 90 days. See you there. Just want to let you high five. You won't see them in person, you'll see them in the spirit. You can have a seat. Boom. It's going to be a very interesting 90 days you're stepping into. Hallelujah. Okay. If you'll, if you'll, now watch this. If you'll do this, the Lord will meet you. There'll be times you don't feel, you don't, maybe you're tired. Just just be there. You, there'll be times you'll think nothing's happening. Don't let that fake you out. Okay. Mm. Mm. I could tell you so much more about people that graduated from this class, but it just it takes time. But some of the stories are crazy. Some of the people that have graduated from this have gone into global revival. Hallelujah. Talking throughout church history. Others have gone into kingdom 
kingdom ventures where they have risen to the top in their business field mm. and now are touching nations through kingdom resources and kingdom wealth. Hallelujah. But you have to just have to cross the finish line. You go three months and you flop. That's great. No condemnation, no legalism. But you did you don't get the diploma. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands one more time. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Yes. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I'll see you at the finish line. Thank you, Now, God, we give you praise. Give you. Amen. 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 Pray in the spirit for a moment. We're in the glory. Yes, shut up.